Okay guys, so the first step in this project is to, well it's not necessarily the first step, but we're going to create the API first, just because it's fairly simple and straightforward. So we got a bit of a roadmap here. I'll create the API, add a couple gems, um, etc, etc. So let's uh, let's just get started. We'll build a new app. Whoops. We'll s let's put them, um, let's put both our apps in the same directory. So we've got posts and articles. So I'm just going to call this Project Schmarticle really terrible at coming up with project names so whatever we'll say schmarticle api <coughs> excuse me and while this installs we'll just go to the active model c realizers github and copy paste this uh, we got to add this to our gem file and then we're going to uncomment uh, rack cores which is basically to allow data to come in from from other sources it's a security measure so I just realized that I ran this without the API flag so I'm gonna delete that and we shouldn't have anything in here rails new schmarticle API with the API flag because so we can get like a bare-bones app basically um, without style sheets and views and stuff so let's go into it then jump file and let's take out the comment on cores. Let's get rid of all this stuff for now. And then we're just going to paste active model serializers as well. So we'll do bundle. Everything looks good. Let's open it back up. What's the next step? Um, okay, mime types. So because we uh, because we're going to have basically a, a front end, we need to accept uh, JSON json types so let's go into config initializers uh, uh, active model serializers and add this uh, mime type specification info uh, feel free to pause the video and basically just paste this in or look it up in google so config initializers let's create a file here active underscore model underscore serializer dot rb and we're just gonna paste all of that in there cool close that that's all you gotta do <coughs> and the next thing we'll do let me see is uh, make sure cores is set up so in that same file we should have a cores there it is same folder let's uncomment this and there's a way to do it in vim i think you go like this Shift I and then I think I delete that. Fuck, fuck it. We'll just do it one by one. And we'll just make it here so it we'll just put an asterisk here so it accepts from everything for now. It's not a big deal. And that's ready. Okay. Next step is to create the resource. Okay, cool. So we're just gonna go into our terminal here. Let's close this up <clears throat> and CD into the Schmarticle API. Okay, cool. And we're just going to run a migration here and we're going to have articles. I know we had posts in the demo, but article is fine since we called this stupid app Schmarticle. I'm telling you, I'm really bad at coming up with names. Rails G model. Um, article and let's say it's got we're just gonna keep it simple right we'll say title and the title is a string okay cool let's just make sure here that it was the migration file was created create articles string title okay cool so we're gonna save this we've got a title we got timestamps cool um, let's do Let's see that our model file was created first. Okay, cool. Um, do rake db migrate. Everything went well, hopefully. Cool. I think the next next step should be to do our routes. Let me just make sure. Okay, routes. So basically, namespacing just allows us to have something like, um, let's just say. Our site's called Schmarticle. Our API is schmarticles.com, 
and then with namespaces we can have something like API slash v1 right which is pretty cool because you can have an API specific URL uh, some people do it with like a module sort of uh, syntax or I forget what it's called um, where you where it's like this or a subdomain where you have like API dot which is also cool so you can go ahead and do it that way if you want um, let's just keep it simple here so we'll go to routes and we'll say resources articles we say namespace name space geez I can't type um, we want API so we'll do API do namespace version 1 remember to version your APIs because you know at one point you want to make might want to make changes and you're going to need a second version and this way you can sort of make changes without breaking your first one um, so it's good it's good to, to have versions so in here we'll have resources articles close that up whoops okay that looks good Let's see what we should do next I'm going to get rid of this oh yeah since we've namespace now our controllers are probably um, gonna be kinda messed up so we should you know make a, a good structure for our controllers. so we're gonna have a controllers folder obviously which we do have right here let's close this controllers and inside here we're gonna create a couple folders the API then the version 1 so we'll say API slash v1 that's also going to be a folder. So inside API, we got v1. And in here, we're going to create a post controller file. Okay, so to make sure that um, we're referencing correctly, we're going to say module API, module v1, and then class post controller from application controller. Okay, cool. And let's end all of these. Looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. What should we do next? Probably our serializer. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to add the actions yet. Well, obviously, in here, we're going to need endpoints, right? So we're going to need something like def index. And it's going to respond to JSON. Um, we're going to need a delete as well or a destroy. And um, we're going to need stuff like that, but I think I'm going to do it as we go with our front end so you can see um, how the endpoints are being added. Plus, this video is getting a little long, so let's go ahead and close this. And uh, we'll just set up our serializer real quick. So, we're going to create a new folder here called serializers. Serializers, and we'll say article serializer dot rb cool open that up and we'll say class whoops class not ask class article serializer from active model seria sorry serializer and here we'll just say attributes d and what was it title right and let's fix the formatting okay cool so our API is basically set up obviously um, our controller here the actions don't uh, we got to make them respond to JSON first of all because that's what we'll be uh, consuming and um, uh, yeah, so we're going to do that as we build the front end. This video is getting a little long, so I'll see you in the next video.